Hi guys, this is Start of Fire 91. Um, this has uh, been a long time since I did my other tutorial. And uh, I don't know if you can see this. Anyway, haven't done this in a while. Um, but I'm going to show you how to put vegetation and objects onto your map. Now, if you don't know how to get textures drawn on your map and do all this, do uh, basically get all your your base layer of your map all set up go watch my first tutorial and that'll show you how to do that but uh, this one you can see I already got some vegetation here and uh, I know this map looks really retarded but uh, I already got some little bit of vehicles here also set up a lot of weapons over here and uh, You can see they're all dynamic in the map. And, uh. Anyway, um, right now I'm just going to show you how to put vegetation on the map. Now to do this, I already got some right here, but I'll go get another one just to show you. Now, whenever you click this little tree, it's going to bring up this preview window, and you're going to click on natural, and it's going to give you all of these plants. And I, um, let's do some grass first. So you go to ground plants, then you go to grass, and then you pick whichever one you want. I like the big patch medium. So I'm going to select that. And right here is where you're going to set the different settings so it all doesn't look the same and completely fake. And you'd want to turn these three checkboxes right here. Rain and rotation, align to terrain, and use terrain color on. And I usually turn the size variation to 0.5 or about 0.75. And since it's grass, I'll set the size down to about 0.5 so it's not too huge. Um, if you want your grass to cast a shadow, check that, receive shadow, and that's about it, and, but if you have a better graphics card, you can go ahead and just uncheck use sprites, because that's just stupid. Um, then all you have to do is select your radius, and also, say if you're doing trees and you don't want a whole bunch of trees all in one place, the density is what's going to change that. So if you set the density higher, they're going to spread out more. And that means if you spread it out enough, you'll have to move your brush radius up for it to paint just the, those trees by the density that you set it to. So right now we're just going to paint the grass. Very easy to do once you know what you're doing. And then we go down here, and there's grass. Maximum armor. And see, if it was still set to 1, it'd be really big. And this is only supposed to be medium-sized grass, so this is a good size, I would say. It's usually what I set it to. Then if you want trees, you do the same thing. Go to Vegetation. Click this little tree, the Preview button. Then click on Natural. Then go to Trees. Then, um, depending on which tree you want, with these trees right here that I got in the background, I selected River Tree. So I'll get a different type of tree that I don't have in there. And basically you do the same thing here, except if you want a little bit of difference on the tree size, like I got some pretty huge trees down here. Don't judge on how stupid it looks. Just do you see the difference in the sizes of the trees. And it's all the same tree, the same file, too. So, but they all look different. So you might want to turn the size variation maybe up to 1.5. And you can leave the size where it's at. And then check these if you want to. And the use terrain color just makes it to where whatever your ground color is, then it's going to match that better. Because it'd be re it would look dumb if you had really dark green grass but really light trees, and it just mismatch and not look that good. All right, I want to turn the density up on this a little bit. Ten. Let's go back up here. Paint objects. I'm gonna make sure that's selected. 
And there you go. You got some trees. And they don't all look the same. That random rotation pr helps a lot too because it's all randomly rotated and uh, the size variation just makes it all look different. You couldn't even tell. You know, whenever you're playing through the campaign, there's the same trees everywhere. They're just rotated differently and they look the same. If they, like, if they wouldn't, if they, here, I'll show you what they look like if they're not rotated. See how they're, the sizes are different, but they're all going the same way. And it just looks dumb, so. That's why we check that. So that's how you put vegetation on your map. Now I'll show you how to put, say, a house on your map, or any any uh, entity on your map, which is in this archetype entity section. And normally, if you're if you haven't did this yet, you won't have anything right here, like I do. So what you're going to do to get all those in there, and it's it takes some time, not too, it's not ridiculous though. You go into database view, you just right click right there where it says it, view, database view, and then it'll bring you to this. Then you select the folder, and there's all your XML files, and that's all of these. So you go through there, click one, click open, and since I already do, it's going to say I already have it, so. But you just click one, click open, and you go through every single one of these, and then once you're done, you go back to perspective view which is the view that we were just in. Then you click on Archetype Entity, and then they'll all be here. And for a building, you just go to Buildings. Then for this, I know these work pretty well. So I'm going to drag this Village House right onto the map. And you're going to notice it's not touching the ground. So what you're going to have to do, and all these props, you're going to have to move around and make them the way you want them. And uh, usually what I found out that helps pretty good is if you turn snap off. I turn the snap angle and snap to grid off because it's just not, it's, this is useless in some cases. Let's see, that's, that's about good. It's touching the ground on all sides. Got the little stairs right here. Don't want to make sure there's any grass popping through the house because that would not make for a good map, good looking map anyway. So now you got your house. And as you can see, they're already dynamic by default. And uh, you can click this little tool right here to rotate it, make it turn it whichever way you want to. And you do the same with the with the uh, vehicles too. They're in there in the archetype entity section. Down here, and you can do multiplayer vehicles. So if you played the multiplayer and you saw some vehicles on there, they're right from here. Or that's not the right menu. Go to vehicles and it's sorted out by air, land, and sea. Right now I'm going to do air, pull out a helicopter or a VTOL, and it's just the same way you did the house. Just pull it out onto the map. And you want to make sure this is selected too. If you're dragging it right onto the actual surface of your map, because I'll show you what happens whenever you don't, and it's really annoying. So I'll just go ahead and select one of these because it automatically switches to these whenever you make a setting on the X, Y, or Z axis. So I'm going to set it to that. Now I'm going to drag it out here. And right now it's on the X, Y, so it's just dragging along here. So that didn't show you anything. So now I'm going to do it on the Z. Try this again. And see, now it's retarded. You know. No one wants that. So I always select the follow terrain and snap to objects button because it just helps out so much. And uh, depending on how this video turns out, um, I'll have to probably edit it a little bit because I screwed up like everyone else. Um, and then depending on how, how much you got, how much it, see, my gosh. Depending on how much of you guys watch this video and find it helpful, I will continue making these tutorials. So, I know I put that video out for those of you that even watch my videos on my channel. I put my first Crisis tutorial out a while ago, and I haven't made one since. And uh, I actually got, that's one of the videos I got most of my views on. 
and uh, I want to continue making them. And I know other people have these tutorials, but I just feel like they are so robotic and like they script their what they say out and I don't like that at all. And I'm gonna keep some crap in here that, you know, I don't wanna feel like I'm a robot. So, depending on how good this video is, I'll continue to make more if you guys find them helpful. And if there's anything specific that you guys wanna know about the CryEngine 2 Sandbox Editor, I will be glad to figure it out if I don't know it and show you. And I guess that's it. I haven't made one of these videos in a while, so I don't know what to say. I'm kind of nervous. I don't know how this is going to turn out. But anyway, that's how you guys put vegetation and archetype entities on your map. This is Startfire91, and I'm stopping the video right now.